What's up, guys? It's Roy Felshock and the Nice to Hedgehog here with our Week 6 matchup of the PDL. This is our last game with the regular team that we have here for the season. And, um, yeah, then we're going to go into another draft. We're going to draft our final team. Uh, currently, we're 3-2. and two. I think we either a plus 5 or a plus 4 differential. I can't really remember off the top of my head. Um, so if we win this game, we can pretty much secure playoffs with one win. If we lose this game, we're going to have to guarantee, have to win at least two of our last three games to guarantee. So it's going to be a hard one, but you know what? Challenging them. So looking on, we're taking on Toronto Maple Leafions here for this week. Um, and they brought a completely different team than I was expecting. A hundred percent a completely different team than I was expecting. Um, because there was like, I think like four out of the uh, six mods he brought were not the ones I expected. Kind of the same with, no, not exactly the same, but something else. Uh, what was it? This one was someone else that did that. Who knows? But yeah, they completely brought a different team than I was fully expecting, which actually is kind of good and bad. Um, it's good because of the fact that what we had. I think it's bad, though, because um, some of my mons can't touch some of his mons on here. Like, I have literally not that many answers to Rose Raid on my team, which really sucks. Um, I don't have a lot of great answers to certain other typings on his team. Um, the gold arc was something I could have maybe saw him bring, but I wasn't too confident he'd bring that. Uh, Jolteon was kind of a little surprised to see he brought, but kind of makes sense. Rose Raid, I'm actually definitely surprised to see that being brought. I don't think that I had a really good matchup. Hydreigon, kind of surprised to see it, but at the same time, it's not too bad against me, but still. Um, but yeah. And before we end this match, they said they were scared of Mammal Swine. Yeah, they pretty much brought a team that lost to Mammal Swine. So I don't know why they say they're scared of Mammal Swine when they had a team that lost to Mammal Swine straight up. Like, I don't understand that. The team that they could have brought would have countered Mammal Swine. Like, Snorlax counters Mammal Swine. Skarmory counters Mammal Swine. So I'm generally very surprised they didn't bring Snorlax or Skarmory, which they have on their team. Which, again, just questioned why I... And also, you know, they have uh, Combuskin with Speed Boost, which, you know, if I don't get Mouse Wine in the right opportunity, and, you know, they get uh, SD up and Protect, two per, like, gets one SD up, Speed Boost, then Protect, Speed Boost, then Outspeed. So it's like, I don't know exactly why they were scared of Mouse Wine when they had really good answers to Mouse Wine. But it's up to... And also they have Rotom Watch. So, again, I don't know what they were thinking, but it's way the way they've been built, so... So we're going to have to go in this matchup with whatever we have here. So so looking at leads here, I was really tempted to potentially lead off here with uh, my Celesteela, my Mega Gallade, and all that stuff. So I go ahead, lead off with my Hamster, and unfortunately, he leads off with Mega Danta. I click here, Protect, to scout what he wants to do here, and uh, he reels the Diamond Storm. Also, the reason why this also, I haven't even said it before, um, the reason why this is postcom, I actually had friends in a call that I was talking with, apparently me being deafened, let me still hear them, which is really weird, and I might need to fix my Discord settings for that, but, um, so I wasn't, and then, to be generally honest with you guys, I really didn't focus on this match, um, and the reason why I didn't focus much, it wasn't because of my friends, so don't get mad at my friends for distracting me, it wasn't them. I just generally was not paying attention in this matchup for some reason. I don't know why I wasn't paying attention or anything like that. It, it I just, it, I was just blanking. Like, hardcore blanking for some whatever reason. I don't know why. So your real self Encore, which is actually bad, because now I'm forced to switch. I go right into my Stella Steel, which I probably should have went in my Porygon. Um, I go for the Autobots here. Hopefully he's going to prop my weakness policy. I go for the energy ball. He actually reveals to pretty much be a Spadev Rotom. So I need to get a crit. Unfortunately, crit doesn't happen. And Cell Steals go down. And that's actually really, really bad. In comes Deancey. I go to Ariel here. Make the position out to Gallade. He actually stayed in there. Which, if they have Payapa Berry, then it makes sense. But at the same time, I don't think it makes sense to stay in when you had a Mega Deancey that speed ties. And you'll find out later that... Well, I'll just say around they had brought Scarf Golurk. You have Scarf Golurk there. And you also have Jolteon, which just raw outspeeds me. So I generally think that was a misplay from them. Because obviously they go for Sleep Powder. It sadly does connect. 
But the thing is, if that sleep powder had missed, that basically could have been the game right there because at plus two, I'm pretty much okoing everything on their team. Maybe not Golurk with Shadow Sneak, but basically I KO everything on this. Unless that Jolteon is specs, it doesn't do it won't kill me in one hit because of my natural spadef. But again, I, I just generally think that was a real misplay on their end because yes, if their Payapa Berry is a thing, but if I flinch him through Payapa Berry, then it's just a wasted turn then. And again, if they miss Sleep Powder, then it's also another wasted turn. So I generally think they made a really um bit of a misplay there by staying in. Obviously, they got rewarded with landing the Sleep Powder on that. And then the Shadow Ball, which did a lot of damage. And as you can see here, I stayed asleep. Obviously, there was the one turn I stayed asleep, and they Shadow Balled me. Then there was a the turn I stayed with them, and then so I stayed asleep for two more full turns, basically costing me my Mega Lady. I aura wheel here, and right here, I make a, I make a really bad decision here. I really misprepped my Morpeko. I fought with the speed I had, which actually was no speed investment. I thought I was gonna outspeed to Ancy, but I ended up messing that up, and it was three points. Well, well, technically four if you want to count that being three fifty one. I was three or to four speed points lower than the Ancy. Which meant my ore wheel was now weaker. And if I had just looked at that, I actually would have ore wheeled again in front of that thing. Then I would have just done what I did. So unfortunately, I go that. So I go with Sanity here and go for that. I go right into my Porygon 2. And uh, he goes with the No Guard here. I'm going to be able to take the hit, but I get confused. But luckily, the duck is well trained. He is not going to get confused once. And uh, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this game is pretty much over. There's nothing I can really do to stop anything in this team. Porygon can kind of do something, but it really can't. And this is where, unfortunately, the Toxic comes into play. And uh, yeah, and you can see he's left over. So again, Jolteon would not have been able to knock me out there. He also has Volt Switch there. I go for the Hydra. I'm hoping to kill this thing. That might have, that had to have been a roll, and he got the roll. Then he gets a crit, which I don't think really matter at that point in time. He Earthquakes my Primarina, which I don't know if Earthquaking really was the play right there. But this is where they revealed to be Scarf Golurk, and at this point in time, there's nothing I can really do. I lose this game. He literally just needs this Toxic Stall me here. Uh, they go for the Leaf Storm here, which I don't really understand why they did that when I can just recover off the damage there. Um, I believe I click Recover here, actually. Yes, I do. Uh, and as you're going to see... There's no way I can beat this thing. He's got no guard. If I could have been able to PP stall him out of there, I would have been good. I could have potentially two shot and then with Shadow Ball, and that's gonna be the game right there. So uh, I mostly blame myself for this loss here because of the fact that I wasn't really paying attention in this matchup, and for the fact that I think I just really prepped badly. I think I over prepped for a lot of things on their team. Uh, definitely, I think not bringing Mammo actually kind of ended up fighting us in the butt. Even though again they had great answers to Mammo, and I don't understand why they didn't bring those answers to Mammo. Rotom is, like, not really realistically the best way to counter Mammo because Mammo is a good extra freeze dry. But it's a good way to stop Scarf Mammo from clicking ground moves. Skarmory is a really good one. Physically defensive Snorlax is really good. Like, I don't know what you want. Uh, Celesteel, I definitely think I misplayed Celesteel there. I think I could have actually done a lot more work with Celesteel if I didn't mess that up. Also, I think my Lycanroc, maybe I should have put coverage for Golurk potentially. But again, I didn't think Golurk was coming. Golurk, in my opinion, Golurk had a bad matchup against me. Because I had really good coverage against him. I had some really good answers to him. I, I generally think Golurk was not a good amount. I mean, it was something I could saw him bring as like a stealth rocker, not a choice card user. And all that, since my hazard removal wasn't always the greatest. But again, I, I don't know if I agree with the team that they brought. Especially when they said they feared Mammoth Swine. And they brought a team that pretty much just lost to Mammoth Swine. Like, literally... Five out of their six moms lost to Mammoth Swine. All six of them could have lost to Mammoth Swine if I had freeze dry. So, I'm just saying. So, But again, that's how they prepped. And again, I don't blame myself for losing for definitely not paying attention. Or being focused in this matchup. But in fairness, this was also one of the two games I played that where I was actually really sick as well from yesterday. Well, on the 2nd of May, I guess I should technically say. Because I can't say yesterday because I was away from the game. But you know what I mean. But, yeah, um, 
Yeah, I don't know what else I did wrong in this matchup. Um, again, I really don't agree with that Rose Ray play that they did. I really, really, really don't agree with that play. Again, if you're Payapa Berry, it makes sense to go and stay in for it. Which, actually, let's look back here. Did they actually reveal to be Black Sludge or anything? Let me look here. 27. Yeah, they must have been Payapa Berry then. They must have been Payapa. They had to have been, must have been Payapa then. But, again, I, I just don't agree with that play. I just don't agree with that play, though. Because, again, if you miss your... I can flinch through that. I can... I can I can flinch through that. I can put them on that necessarily I don't think anyone on my team anymore to sleep. And, I, again, I could have subbed right there and then gone for two Zen headbutts, get the KO and stuff like that. I just generally don't think that was a smart play. And plus, if you want to really use up the Payapa Berry, you really should hold off on it until I'm weakened, then bring it in, you get the guaranteed kill. And also, I don't agree with the fact that they swapped out right there when they could have known that two Shadow Balls killed. I'm very surprised that they did that as well, because then again, I could have killed Rotom Heat Wash, which would be giving you HP back, and then I could have just Drain Punch or Shadow Sneak twice on the Rose Raid, weaken Rose Raid down, and then at that point in time, if I get Golurk weakened to that point in degree, uh, Stone Edge spam from Sanity would have won the game there. So, again, I think in personal, again, I'm not the type of guy that says I played a, black, a bad player or anything like that. But I personally think this is one of those times where I know I, I prepped good for this team, but they just, with what they said after the game and how they played this game, I just generally think that they were really over prepping or they. There's something less than that. Again, I'm not taking t trying to take away credibility of a player or try to take away a win that someone had, you know, that earned it, you know, that. I'm not that type of person to do that. But one of my good buddies, Owen, actually, uh, OG Albino, if you guys don't know, he actually mentioned that a uh, player made the wrong choice there, too. Like, when he did his one recent video where a guy in front of a Bronzong set up an SD in front of Bronzong, and Bronzong could have just straight up killed it. He amended that that was not a good play on the his opponent's part. And I, I personally agree with Owen that that wasn't a good play. And this is where I'm saying right here, I, like, if you have Payapa Berry, you have Payapa Berry. But, again, if I flinch you, your Payapa Berry is basically wasted. And if you miss Sleep Powder, then it's also just wasted at that point. So, I don't know. I'm not going to really be too salty about this. Again, we're now in a position where we kind of have to win at least two of our three games. There could be a possibility we need to win all three. Winning all three guarantees us. Winning two should pretty much guarantee us, but if we win one, we might be out. It just really depends on how differential goes for the rest of the way. But that's our that's our second team. Our second team went two and one, which honestly I will take take for that. So sorry. So right now our first draft got one and two, even though I do think it could have been two and one at least. And this draft went 2-1, where I think it possibly could have three 3-1. So right now, I definitely think both my teams I've drafted so far haven't been terrible. I think they've been really, really good. But for my third team, I've got a really specific strategy I'm going to go with. And I'm hoping and praying works. And it's not going to cost me right there. So but thank you all so much for watching, though. Like, comment, share, subscribe. See you guys in the next one. But until next time, guys, I will see you for the third draft analysis of PDL. But until next time, guys, I'll see you guys later. Peace.